Ypsilanti's about an hour away, depending on the drive time, from Ford Field. And Ohio's been there many times before, four times before, the Frank Solitz era as Mackey's champions. They hope to be there again this year on December the 2nd at Ford Field to capture that elusive Mac crown. Ohio hasn't won one since 1968. Everybody around this program certainly knows it. This program's better now than it's ever been and more suited now to win a Mac championship than they have been in a long time. It is an eight-game drive to Detroit, and it starts off at the factory on Saturday. Playing the Eagles now is more difficult than it's been in a long time. Ohio found that out last year at home, and they hope to do better than they did last year in Athens. It was week seven. Ohio rode a three-game winning streak into the matchup, a three-gamer that followed the win over Kansas in the nine-point loss at Tennessee, so things were going well. Eastern was four and two, and one of the four was over Wyoming. We knew it would be a grinder, and it was. Just six points were scored in the first half. A Louis Zervis 22-yard field goal tied it at three, and that was a halftime score. Dorian Brown gave the Bobcats their only lead of the day on a six-yard TD run late in the third, 10-6. The Eagles elevated the advantage to 10 twice. Rogan Roback connected with Antoine Porter from 11 yards out late in the fourth. The PA team made it 27-17, and 27-20 was the final. It was Eastern's first win in Athens since 1994. It was their third straight road win, something they hadn't done since 1967. They built something at the factory last year. Seven wins and a trip to a bowl game for the first time since 1987. It was a 24-20 loss to Old Dominion in the Bahamas Bowl, but even in that setback, them being there and their season really was a heck of a story. They're adding on to what they built in 16 and 17. EMU is 2-0 for the first time since 2011. It controlled Charlotte at home 24-7 in the opener. That's back-to-back -back wins over the 49ers. Then history in New Jersey in Week 2. Eastern had never beaten a Power 5 conference opponent until their 16-13 victory at Rutgers. The defense dominated the day and there was just enough offense to get it done. Eastern was up 10-3 at halftime. Tied it at 13 at the end of three. The third and final Paul Furcano field goal put them up three with 10 minutes left. A Brody Hoying interception ended one Scarlet Knight drive and Jeremiah Harris swooped in for the game ceiling sack as time ran out. It was their first win over the Big Ten in 39 tries. Senior quarterback Brogan Roback hit Ohio with three touchdown passes last year. This year he has one and one interception in two weeks, 527 yards through the air. Senior Sergio Bailey is his top target. He has 185 receiving yards. He had a 100-yard day at Rutgers. Senior Antoine Porter has 136 yards and a touchdown. On the ground, junior Shaq Van has 157 yards, and junior Ian Erickson only has 45 yards with two scores. Defensively, Hoying, a sophomore linebacker, leads them with Harris, a senior D lineman, with 11 tackles. Harris has three and a half tackles for loss. Hoying has two interceptions. Junior linebacker Kyle Rockwall has 10 stops, two and a half TFL. Overall, EMU has five sacks and three picks in two weeks. Head coach Chris Creighton is in his fourth season. There have been 12 victories in that time, but he's installed a genuine belief that they can win at Eastern Michigan. And playing them, no walk in the park anymore. This is meeting 32 in the all-time series. Ohio has 18 wins. There has been one tie. There have been longer max series that Ohio has played over the years, but when you see a team this many times, you'll have some emotional moments and some memorable experiences. Case in point 2013, the last time the Bobcats saw the Eagles at Ryan Nearson Stadium. It was an Ohio win, 56-28, to but that wasn't the entire story. Leading up to the ball game, tragedy struck their program. Demarius Reed was shot and killed the day before the game was played. Can you imagine that? A team going out there when one of their brothers isn't with them any longer? The emotions that surround that contest? Well, divine intervention perhaps because they took the opening kickoff back for a touchdown. That was their first kick return touchdown since 2007. Tyler Allen was the one that got it done. And Greg Steiner, the sports information director at Eastern Michigan, tells us that was the first kickoff return for a touchdown on the opening kick at least since 1967. Wow, it was an emotional moment. It was a goosebump moment. It was a moment that no one that was there will ever forget. They will not forget Demarius Reed. We won't either. And we look forward to seeing the Eagles again this Saturday. 
Ohio and Eastern Michigan will be on the Ohio IMG Sports Network. Rob Cornelius and I will have it for you with a 1 o'clock pregame and a 2 o'clock kick. It's also on ESPN3. And we're presented by the Athens County Convention and Visitors Bureau on the web at AthensOhio.com. For Jason Chapito, I'm Russ Eisenstein, and this is Bobcat TV.